Well, how is your thyroid working these days? What are the symptoms experienced when it's not functioning well? Are you overweight because your thyroid is out of whack? These are some of the questions my next guest may be able to answer. Good morning and welcome to Justine Sanfilippo. She's the author of Lose Your Inches Without Losing Your Mind, 10 Simple Weeks to a Slimmer Waistline and a Healthier You. Hi, Justine. Hi, Pamela. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, what is your experience um, with thyroid problems? What, what prompted you to delve into this? Well, it's interesting. I've been in the health field as a health coach for about 10 years, but about a year ago, I couldn't really figure out what was wrong with me. I was tired all the time. Then I had insomnia. I had some unexplained weight gain because I would work out all the time and eat healthy and, you know, practice what I preach. Um, and I just didn't feel right. I sort of had brain fog. I couldn't remember anything. So what happened is I was going on a plane to Seattle for a work trip, and I ended up sitting next to this lady, um, and we talked all about hormones and different things, and that was sort of my sign of, well, perhaps I should get something tested because clearly my body's off. Um, so what was discovered is I've been healing my thyroid, but I have a low thyroid, which is hypothyroidism, and Hashimoto's, which is where there's antibodies attacking your thyroid. And so I've been on this journey for a year of healing my thyroid. Mm -hmm. And how did you go about, what tests were done to determine whether or not your thyroid was out of whack? Sure. So the standard test is something called TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. Um, that's pretty much what most doctors do. And if it's high, then that means that you have a lower thyroid. So mine was on the high side. Um, however, another test I would highly recommend, which isn't standard, is to test the th thyroid antibodies. Because if there's antibodies attacking your thyroid, it's damaging the, and it, it means an overall autoimmune condition in which your immune system is, you know, you're sort of attacking itself. So that's where you really need to get to the underlying issues of how to heal your immune system. Um, and then some other tests, they could test your T3 and T4 levels, your cortisol levels, adrenal glands, vitamin deficiencies, um, food allergies, iodine levels. It's, it's really a whole host of things. But the main thing are the TSH and your antibodies. There's a bit of a controversy up here um, about um, the TSH and whether or not it uh, is a, a good enough marker for um, thyroid problems because I've talked to a lot yeah. of people who say, I've had that test done. The only one that, by my understanding, is offered under our medical services plan here and that if, if you're within that range and things look good, they consider your, your thyroid to be okay. And then other people say, no, you need to test the T3 and the T4. Yes, yes. I, I agree with TSH is not the best test for thyroid overall health. Um, I would recommend all of the other ones as well. Even if it's a little bit out of pocket, it's worth it because it can really tell what's going on with your thyroid. So the TSH, what happens is the pituitary gland is what is releasing TSH. So basically, it's how much is your brain screaming at your thyroid to make thyroid hormones? So if your number is high, it's yelling very loudly. But if the thyroid doesn't have all the tools it needs to make the proper thyroid hormones, that's when you need the other test to really understand uh, what's going on with it. So you need to go to a naturopath and get your wallet out and get tested for T3 and T4. Even if your, your TSH uh, looks or you're told by your general practitioner that, that everything's fine. Yes, yeah, and definitely also test the thyroid antibodies. And my very first test, I, I went to just a standard medical, you know, family practice doctor because I actually had just moved to Los Angeles and I didn't know any doctors in the area. Um, but then I, I realized I needed somebody a little bit more integrative and holistic <laughs> because I wanted to heal it and not just take a pill for the rest of my life. Um, but, yeah, so with the TSH, I often hear, and I have a lot of clients where, They'll say, yes, I've been put on whatever pill, so technically my TSH, or, yeah. Yeah, is in a normal range. However, I have all these other symptoms. What is going on? And that's when I say, well, these are some other things you may want to look at. Food allergies especially, that was one of the most enlightening things for myself is that because my body was having all this extra inflammation, which is why there's the antibodies and, and all that. So I was eating foods daily that I had no idea my body had built up an intolerance to and an 
it actually builds up an allergy to in some cases. And so just cutting those foods out of my diet, I mean, I feel a million times better. Was that affecting so your, your thyroid or that was just a, a yes. weight gain thing? Um, both, actually. So um, it affects the thyroid because when there's extra, when there's inflammation in the body, the body really can't heal itself. Again, we have to give it the tools to be able to heal itself by itself. Um, so by eating foods, for example, gluten is very common with people with thyroid issues because um, the way that gluten is structured, the body sort of looks at it. It's very similar to how a thyroid cell is structured, so it sort of attacks both. So I had to cut out gluten, um, dairy, eggs, and, and even coffee <laughs> and some other things like that. And so not only is my thyroid healing because of these dietary changes, but also I've shrunk. I mean, I've shrunk a size, which, you know, is a really great side effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, Justine, I want to go back to um, the testing. So the TSH um, might not be the indicator because I think a lot of people think, well, you know, I've had that test, my thyroid's okay, yet... Um, sort of the symptoms that would be associated with hypothyroidism, meaning weight gain and uh, sleep problems and the like, brain fog, um, persist. So yes. then the idea is to test for T3, T4, and that's a blood test? Is yes, it or saliva? Blood, or? Um, blood test seems to be the, the, the way to go for the, the thyroid test. Um, and then, again, I, I've had... Even since I understood that with Hashimoto's, it's antibodies attacking your thyroid. So that's an autoimmune issue. So I'm like, why is my immune system not at peak capacity? So I've even done tests not only for the food allergies but for heavy metals. Turns out I had some mercury in my system from when I had um, amalgam fillings. And I've had them removed or eating a lot of tuna, you know, 10 years ago when I didn't know about mercury and tuna. Um, so I had to get some heavy metals done some chelation, got that out of my body. I had some candida from when I used to have to take a lot of antibiotics because I once got bit by a tick. So all of <laughs> I've been tested Lots for to a clear out, yeah. I mean, everything has been tested. And so all of these functions, everything works together. I mean, the body is this amazing creation that just everything functions together. And the thyroid is an indicator of how everything is working. Justine, um, so how do you... Sorry. Yes, go ahead. How do you test... Um, thyroid antibodies. Is that a blood test as well? Yes, that's a blood test. It's just, you just tell your doctor, I want my thyroid antibodies tested, and it's a simple blood test. Yeah. Okay. And so once we establish through those three tests beyond the TSH that mm -hmm. the, the thyroid is out of whack, um, yes. do you then proceed to the food allergy uh, testing, or is this done all in concert? Because it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot. So the very first test is just to get the blood test for TSH, T3, T4 antibodies. That's step number one. And that could usually be done through just a regular you know, family practitioner, your regular doctor. Then after that, you can decide if you need to go to somebody else. And that's where the other testing would come into play, such as food allergies, heavy metals, um, things like that. So yeah, that would be the next step. It sounds expensive because I know, at least from my own experience here, uh, the medical system does not pay uh, for anything past the TSH. Um, and you live down in the States. So was it a whole bundle of money for you to get all of this testing done and then chelation therapy? Um, there was a, quite a few out-of-pocket expenses, um, for sure. And, but in the grand scheme of things, I was looking at it as, well, I'm going to heal this now so that I don't have advanced medical issues later, like thyroid cancer or, or something like that. So, yes, there may be some out-of-pocket expenses, but, um, you know, and give yourself like a year or two to really focus on your health and focus on doing what you need to do to get better. But then you're avoiding expenses in the future and, and other health issues. All right. We come back more on the thyroid with Justine Sanfilippo. Stay with us. Call us. 250-386-1161 or on your cell at Star 1070. Pamela McCall on CFAX 1070. You know what the first step is to ending the stigma around mental illness? It's talking about it. Hi, I'm Al Faraby. January 28th is Bell Let's Talk Day and everyone at CFAX 1070 encourages you to take part. Language matters. Educate yourself. Be kind. Listen and ask. Talk about it. Let's break the silence. 
Details at cfax1070.com. One of five Canadians will be touched by mental illness in their lifetime. Break the silence. On January 28th, let's talk. Before I went to Ford, I talked to other car dealers and said, I need a new car now. And they said, yes, sir, but we need a payment now. And I said, I don't feel like paying right now. And they said, that's not how it works. And I said, well, that's where we disagree. Don't pay for 90 days when you purchase finance a vehicle monthly at 0% during the now-extended Ford year-end pricing clear-up. Or get great year-end truck cash on F-Series. Plus, get an additional $500 winter warm-up bonus on select new vehicles. Head to your nearest Ford store because it ends February 2nd. See Ford.ca for details. I'm Al Therby with the latest from CFAX Santa's Anonymous. You can help Victoria children in need by recycling your bottles and cans. The Bottle Depot is offering free drop-off or donation to CFAX Santa's Anonymous anytime until the end of January. Donate your empties at the counter or leave it in the charity bins located at every Bottle Depot location. Helping Victoria children and families in need, no matter what the need. Donate to CFAX Santa's Anonymous now at CFAX1070.com. The right kind of professional advice could change your life. Robin of Hatch & Muir. Whether you're choosing an advisor for the first time or considering changing advisors, make sure you get the right one for you. Always look for a qualified financial planner. Complete a background check. Conduct a formal interview. Get all your questions and concerns answered before making a decision. Visit HatchMuir.com and open the worksheet for choosing an advisor. Invest right with Hatch & Muir. Investments, insurance, advice. Call 953-6816. Hatch & Muir. We can help you. This is Talk Radio, and we're talking to Save on Foods president, Daryl Jones, who has a deal that can make ordinary cooks like me seem like a great chef in just minutes. That's right, Rick. This week's Daryl's deal is Western Family Stuffed Chicken Breasts in four tender, delicious flavors, Cordon Swiss, Kiev, Chicken Parmesan, and Broccoli and Cheese. That's 850 grams for just $7.99. Now that is one very tasty deal, straight from Daryl himself. Don't miss out, folks. Join us at Save on Foods. Talk about savings. Need a ride? downtown? Call 382-2222. Gotta get to the ferry? Uh, Call 382-2222. Call Bluebird Cabs today. It's easier than ever to get in touch and get home safe. Bluebird Cabs gift cards are perfect for students, seniors, or anyone on the go. And reloading them is easy. Call Bluebird Cabs. 382-2222. Brewing up some conversation. Cafe Victoria Saturday with Bruce Williams at 3 on CFAX 1070. The biggest news events, the stories in our community, understood. It's Pamela McCall on CFAX 1070. Welcome back. We're talking about thyroid function with Justine Sanfilippo. She is the author of Lose Your Inches Without Losing Your Mind, 10 Simple Weeks to a Slimmer Waistline and a Healthier You. So, Justine, you were describing uh, before we went to the break uh, a really long process with um, getting, you know, functions tested and stuff, yet your book says 10 Simple Weeks to a Slimmer Waistline and a Healthier You. What (laughs) What do we do in 10 weeks to feel better? Um, so in 10 weeks, so, so my book, it, it's the culmination of my journey in college. I, I put on 45 pounds relatively quickly, as some people put on in college. And then I did all the diet roller coasters that people do, the different fad diets and supplements, and nothing worked in the long run. So what I've developed here is a very simple plan that anyone can follow. It is not a diet to where I help a person develop healthy habits to last the rest of their life. So as a health coach, I'm always coaching my clients on figuring out what works for them because we're all unique and we're all different. So, for example, a person only has to read one chapter per week, and then I help them plan out baby goals to focus on for that week. And then we just really focus on measurements versus the scale because the scale can fluctuate way too much. And then we go to the next week, and then soon enough, you're, all these new healthy habits become second nature. Give us some some hints here. What are some of the healthy habits you advocate uh, people adopting? Sure. So two of the most amazing things I found with all of my clients is, number one, to eat breakfast. Um, Often if a person is having trouble losing weight and they're skipping breakfast, that's one of the main things they could do to start losing weight again. And it's just a very simple way for the body to say, oh, well, I'm getting food in the morning, so it sort of has to wake up earlier and the metabolism wakes up so you burn more calories all day long 
and then you're not as hungry during the day, you're not late night snacking. So that's tip number one. And then tip number two is to eat every three hours. So ideally doing a breakfast snack, lunch snack, dinner seems to work for most people. Um, I had a client lose 65 pounds and keep it off for almost three years just by doing that one thing. Did she put it all back on in three years? To, I know. Did she? After three years, <laughs> did it okay. come back on? You said she no, kept it off for almost three years. It's, oh, it's still happening. <laughs> oh, it stayed off. Okay, okay. What happened is she was skipping meals. She worked um, in a doctor's office. She was on her feet all day, and she would just forget to eat. And I said, well, your metabolism needs to be reminded that there's food in the world and there's not a famine happening. And so she did her every three hours where she had a little something to eat, and the weight literally just fell off. Fell off. What's, a little something, what's a little something that people should be eating for their snacks? So snacks, I always like to focus on some protein, some healthy fats, um, you know, some carbs, just for sustained energy, protein especially is good for the brain and it keeps your blood sugar stable. So like a handful of nuts, like almonds or walnuts or cashews, um, it could be as simple as, um, I mean, there's healthier protein bars. I love a healthy peanut butter or almond butter on, I have to do gluten-free toast, so just a, or like some sliced apple with a little bit of peanut butter, um, even like a thing of string cheese if you're really on the go. So just something, hummus with vegetables, um, something with some protein to, to keep your blood sugar stable. Why do we have our, a hard time getting our heads around the fact that when we don't eat, our, our body goes into storage mechanism, does it not? Absolutely. It goes into starvation mode. And there's a little section in, that, in my book where I have a little conversation between the brain and the body. And the brain says, I'm not going to eat so I can lose weight. And the body says, well, that's just not very smart. <laughs> Does it, is it count? Um, it works against people, like you're saying the woman that lost 65 pounds. Yeah, it can, but because our body is designed to survive. So back when we were hunting and gathering our food, if we didn't find our food that day, then the body would hold on to all of our fat cells so we can survive the next day. And if, if we would find food and say we went for a few days without finding food again, it would hold on to anything that we eat and store it as fat. So our body hasn't quite changed that much. From then, the only difference is now there's plenty of food in the world. So if we go, a person goes five or six hours without eating or skips breakfast and doesn't have anything till late afternoon, it's in that fat storage mode because it's in starvation mode. So uh, when I was getting my master's in nutrition, there was a part in the textbook that said at the three-hour mark, that's when the body starts to go into starvation mode and fasting mode. So that's really the reason for that three-hour rule. And then the body's like, oh. There's plenty of food in the world, and it literally releases the fat cells. Justine, why do we need coaches in this day and age? Why can't we just do it ourselves? I think everybody needs a coach. I mean, we all do. I love health coaching. I've had coaches myself in various areas of my life. We just need someone to help keep us accountable, um, somebody to report to, somebody to you know, encourage us, to root us on when we're doing great, and to offer advice. I think everyone could use a coach. It's just, it's just the way that we are. So what happens with a client um, if, they, if they decide that they, um, they can't take it anymore? They're super hungry and they just they want junk food. Do you, do you walk them back from the fridge or do you, <laughs> how do you steer them in the right direction? <laughs> well, everyone's different and I certainly have clients that have had way too much to eat or eat an entire pizza in one sitting. And, and I really talk them through, okay, so why do you think this happened? Were you, did you not plan ahead? Were you craving something? Is there an emotional reason for that particular craving? Um, you know, I never reprimand anybody because we're all human and I've certainly made plenty of mistakes in my life as well. Um, but there's always a reason. So and I just encourage people, not, none of us are perfect. Um, I sort of go by the 80-20 rule of 80% of the time you do what you're supposed to do in terms of eating right and exercise, and 20% of the time you do what you want. And, um, you know, if you're going out to dinner, you know, enjoy it. So it's it's really no big deal. But I try really try to help my clients um, learn balance. I think balance is, is very important. Justine, what would you recommend people have on hand uh, instead of um, dialing up for a pizza? What, what would satisfy people that uh, they might be able to have at home but without all those calories? Well, it depends on the craving. So if a person, say, does want pizza, I say, well, make sure, I mean, you can make it yourself or you can get, like, these little personal ones. I mean, you can use, like, a, a pita and your own sauce and some, like, a little bit of cheese, maybe even some goat cheese. Um, but whatever you're craving, you can have a little bit. Or say you are going out to dinner and you're craving a burger. 
okay, well, how can we make that healthier? Maybe do it without the bread. You can get it wrapped in lettuce now. Without the French fries, maybe get some, a salad on the side. So you sort of give in to the craving, but you're not um, getting off the bandwagon. And so it's all about just healthy portions and moderation. What if everybody else at the table's having all the goodies? Fries, well, gravy. that happens too. I mean, I've certainly been out to eat with friends or family, and they're getting the French fries, or we order, they order dessert for the table, and then I mean, I have a bite or two, or I'll have a French fry or two, but it's okay because that sort of falls in that eighty twenty rule. I got whatever my little craving was out of the way, but I didn't overindulge. What about having a little something to eat before you go out? I think that's a great idea, and especially if you're going out to like a social event or a party, because you never really know what's going to be there or even going out to dinner if you if it's if you want to sort of not be starving when you show up um it's always a good idea to have a little bit of a snack of course what's the wisdom these days about uh, drinking water i hear some people say don't drink water with your meal or others say drink a big glass of water before you eat you'll, you'll feel fuller i've read both i've tried everything um I mean, in general, most people seem to walk around dehydrated, and sometimes we can feel hungry when we're actually thirsty. So a good rule of thumb is if you are feeling hungry, have some water and see if that passes. Um, but as far as eating, having meals and drinking water, not drinking water, I mean, I really think everybody's different. If you seem to be digesting your food just fine with drinking water, which I do, um, then that's okay. But, I mean, there's so many conflicting information. You just really have to figure out what's best for you. Do you still test your thyroid now after you've licked all these problems? Yeah, so every um, three to six months, I'm more on the six months now, I get everything retested to see where everything's at. Um, there are some tests I don't have to redo, like the food allergies I only had to do once and heavy metals once. So um, things like that I don't have to redo. But just for the thyroid, yeah, I just, I just want to make sure that everything's going on the path that it's supposed to and see if there's any tweaks that need to be made. But so far, so far it's healing, so I'm pretty happy. Good news. <laughs> Tell us what chelation therapy is, you said, with heavy metals in your body? So chelation is done um, usually more in a naturopathic or integrative type doctor setting. But it's done through an IV, and they're, they put in different things in the IV to pull the heavy metals out of your system. And oftentimes they can test before and after um, to see, and it's usually through the urine, to see how much actually comes out and then, and then what is left. But it's done through an IV. And, for example, I had to do about four or five treatments of that. Um, I and mean, it takes, like, maybe a half hour. And then it, it's pulled out of your system. So now in the future I, I avoid larger fish, especially tuna, sea bass, ones that will have more mercury in it. I've changed even the pans that I cook with to make sure that they don't release um, or release any sort of metals. Actually. Well, you are one healthy gal. Thanks a lot for well, your inspiration. Well, it's been a journey. <laughs> yeah. I, I thank you for being on the program today, Justine. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All the best. Justine Sanfilippo, author of Lose Your Inches Without Losing Your Mind, 10 Simple Weeks to a Slimmer Waistline and a Healthier You. Bruce Williams, Cafe Victoria, up next. One of the things I'm going to talk about may or may not help your waistline. Oh, okay. Not going to lie to you. How do you feel, how do you feel about pierogies? Uh, I, I like pierogies. Are you in favor of them? I Yes. Well, Pierog pierogies. Uh, pierogies and cabbage rolls, halakshi, all that stuff is big this weekend. It's Malenka. It's Ukrainian New Year. So there's a big parte going on this weekend uh, at the Ukrainian Center. We'll talk about that. Great, rich heritage of Ukrainian people living in Canada. Of course, they're among the many that have great, made this country so great. So we'll talk about that. Uh, speaking of countries being great and families and all, um, the B.C. government has a program underway right now trying to find forever homes for a 1,000 kids. In other words, adoption. A lot of people are adopted, actually. I don't know whether I'm the exception, but I know a lot of folks that, that were adopted, and they're, they're amazing people, of course.